people gonna say, worrying about walking, thinking about what people gonna do, people are already rejecting you. I think I mentioned this one time before. If you don't pass this child, people already know that your mom and dad preach. People already know that you, you preach to children. People already know that you go to church. They already know what you believe because they have already sat around and had a conversation about you. Yep. For real. When you come to work, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I had a job interview um, a couple of months ago. And, you know, just before you, you go into the job interview, there's this lady that, you know, so I always sit down and, and, and you would have a conversation. I would have, um, you have a, you talk to the lady before you get ready to go into the interview with the people. This lady already knew. When I went in there, we would sit down just talking and I'm just yah, 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 just running my mouth, just talking. And we would have a good time. And she was like, so you a preacher, huh? I said, huh? She knew absolutely nothing about me. Well, at least I thought she did. You see what I'm saying? People are going to go ahead and go find out about you what they want to find out about you. They already know. So you can't have, you can't let that, that, that spirit of rejection. Because you know what? If they've already found out about you, and if they're somewhere in the Word, they know that scripture too, that God has not given you a spirit of fear. So if you walk up into the situation and you act fearful, and then they, they're wondering, okay, what type of God you serve? Because the one that I know about. Amen. Don't have me up in here stuttering and stumbling all over my words. Don't have me up in here, you know, going back on, on, on what I know that's right. Huh? Don't have me going in with the crowd, but I know that that, that sister so and so to falsify her time, and when they, when they come and ask you, you're like, oh, I, I don't know, I ain't saying nothing. Yes, you did. Tell the truth. Amen. That's right. Tell the truth. We got to be just like I said. Yes, we have, we have to be honest because they're watching us. Yeah, amen. Amen? amen. Second point. This is the fear of failure. Mm. The fear of failure. It says one of the top fears in the world is a fear of failure. Many people won't, won't try something new unless they are, they are confident that they can win. Failure is a normal part of life and learning from failure can help you find eventual success. Mm -hmm. Anybody got any fears of failure? Yes. Yes. I can't do it. I'm a fail, it ain't gonna work. Right? Amen. It ain't gonna happen. If I go to that store, they they're not gonna let me get that car. Yeah. I used to be like that too. <laughs> <laughs> no. When I got out of college, I was uh I was working at IBM. I was working pretty decent money and you know and uh and so I had, I, had, I had never bought anything. I had never went and, you know, said, bought a, a big purchase item. So you know what? I went down to the car dealer still one day. I just, just went down there. But actually, I was driving a, a, a Mazda 626, and my Mazda 6, the radiator had went out. And, and when I had took it down there, and uh, I had took it down there to get it fixed. And they were saying I had all kind of metal and everything, all them radiators. So I had got, I was kind of fed up. When the guy said, okay, well, and I had got bold. I don't know how, I, where I got that boldness from, but I told him, man, I said, you know what? I ain't fixing that car no more. Tell me how much you're going to give me for it. I'm going out here to the park, and I'm going to get me a car. <laughs> <laughs> I walked out there, and I got amongst all the cars, and I started seeing them prices, 15 and 16 and 20 and 30, and I said, oh, Lord. And I said, I'm walking around, and I'm like, hmm. And then the guy showed me this car, and he was like, yeah, man, he said, I think you look good in this one right here. Blase, blase. So then, you know, at the time, I would call my sister's husband because he was real good with, with finances at the time. And see, y'all see, that's something, there's some things that we need to understand, too. That, you know what I'm saying, when you go out here and you begin to start spending your money, it's good to call somebody that you know that's already successful handling money to help you, you know what I'm saying, make good decisions. And so at the time, you know, the, at the time the vehicle was like seventeen thousand dollars. And so I, I typed up all the information and I sent it to him. And I called him on the phone and he looked up the car. And he said, "Hey man," he said, "Man, that's a good deal." He said, "You need to get that one." 
And I was like, man, and I was saying to myself, well, it's seventeen thousand dollars. I had never bought nothing in my life. And so I went up there and I said, let's go through it. Not just, just I said, let's make it happen. Ran my little credit and all this other stuff, and I'm sitting there, I'm shaking, I'm nervous, because I know they probably will come back telling me that, you know what, man, you ain't good enough. Man, you aren't good enough. You gonna fail, it ain't gonna happen. And boy, when that thing came back and they said that I was approved, I didn't even care what the payment was. I was just like, get in here. <laughs> but it still just so happy, even though I was naive and not checking on the checking on the uh, on the payment and everything, it was still a good deal because they still gave me a, a, a good a good payment also. But you know what I'm saying, you know, going into it, you know, I was already discouraged. You know? But let's look at um yeah, write this down, Exodus. And we're talking about Moses. Remember when Moses was talking to God and he was making all them excuses why he couldn't go tell the people. You know, how many times do we do that? Somebody asks you to go do something. Sister Police, come on up here and say, Wow, my leg hurt this morning. Uh-uh. My throat's full. Right? I can't. You know, and so that, that's, that's what we go, that's just some of the stuff that we do. Sometimes we don't realize that we do it, but that's some of the stuff that we do. I, I, trust me, I'll use this excuse right here. Man, look, I ain't got no musicians. Man, it's hard to get in contact with them rest this morning, you know. I mean, this is just an excuse. It's not that I can't go, because as long as I got use of my voice, you know, hey, God didn't give us a spirit of fear, y'all. He didn't give uh uh, because you never, the thing is, you never know when somebody asks you to do something, right? When somebody asks you to do something, you never know who's out there in the crowd that's going to be the one that's going to sow into your thing, that's going to bring you into your destiny. And you know what? No matter if it's one person, two people, or 20,000 people, you never know who's sending out there that's going to that's gonna, gonna be the one that's, that you're going to be able to connect your anointing up to. And, 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 and take over the world. Amen? Alright. Third point. The fear of loneliness. Everybody uh, got into it in crazy messed up situations because they didn't want to be lonely. Uh, they didn't want to be by themselves. Mm -hmm. Alright? It's just that sometimes people stay in bad relationships or resist Living alone due to the fear of loneliness. Amen. Learning how to tolerate feeling lonely and finding ways to keep keep yourself company can help you manage the fear of loneliness. Uh, that's where a relationship comes in, guys. Relationship. Having a relationship with God. Knowing that, you know what? I'm good. Y'all go ahead. Trust me. I'm one of them type of people, you know what? I can come in this church by myself and have church. I can go to the basketball court and I can have me a full court basketball game all by myself. That's right. Because when I was younger, growing up, I was always by myself. So you know what? I used to go to the basketball court and I was by myself. Yeah, Michael Jordan used to come with me. Michael Johnson used to come with me. Larry Bird used to come with me. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar used to come with me. So, you know, when I was at home by myself, I was cool because I could entertain myself. But now that I know better, you know what? I can get in this word right here. God will begin to, you know what I'm saying, come in and sit with me and talk with me and, and, and reveal things to me and, and, and let me know that, you know what, you're not by yourself. He said in his word, right? He says, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Amen. Never leave you, nor will I forsake you. You know what I'm saying? He, he's always there. So even when you're in them situations, when you're walking through a door and you got that chitter chatter in your ear, God is on, he's on the other side encouraging you, cheering you on. Amen. Amen. And it says here, I'm going to read Psalms 121 for you. If, it, if anybody ever get, get into this situation, you can read this, this, uh, 
book of Psalms right here. I'm going to read it. In the sense of Psalms 121 says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He, he that keepeth thee will not slumber. Bold, he that keepeth Israel shall never slumber nor sleep. The Lord, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth. Even forevermore. I'll never leave you know when I forsake you guys. Yes. Right? Amen. Mm. Amen. I'll never leave you. And that's if that's what I'm learning. I, I, I've learned, you know what I'm saying? Even in my from just even as my faith has grown, I, I know that God is. I know that He's here. I know that He's gonna do it. I know that, that, that he's always with me. Even though sometimes, you know, I might get to a situation where I might lose it. But he's still there. There. He's still there. In your good times, in your bad times. Let me tell you something, y'all. It, it is something that, you know, so when you have a relationship with God, he's there with you in your good times and in your bad times. He's not like these physical friends we have. Because sometimes, you know, I mean, your, your, your friends, they, they just don't, don't cut the muscle. You going through, they ain't there. Right? You going through, I mean, I, I tell Sharon this all the time. I say, you know what? I'm sick and tired of having friends that, you know what I'm saying, always leaning on us when they going through. But then when, when I'm going through, you ain't nowhere to be found. That's an unevenly yoked friendship. I mean, yoked up friendship when we're all on the same level. Yes, I'm not always going to be walking in, in, in God's prosperity and have a pocket full of money all the time. But you know what? When I don't have some pastor, he don't should have a little bit that they can throw my way. You know? And I should have a little bit to throw their way. And you should have a little bit to throw my way. And I should have a little bit to throw your way. Y'all, we all doing this together. We, we Come on. We, we got to we got to get together and link up. We got to hook up and get on the same page. Amen. 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 I'm gonna just briefly mention this one. It says the loss of fear, the fear of loss of freedom. I'm sorry. 